everyone, this is your girl Rosita Cooper, aka Miss Sip with Sip on Radio and Living Your Dreams with Rosita Reality Show. And today we are on Living Your Dreams with Rosita. My guest for today is Chancellor Jackson. He's the author of 14 Days in Beijing. You do not want to miss this. I am your plug, the hostess with the mostest. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Rosita Cooper and I am here with Chancellor Jackson. How you doing today? I feel good. I feel good. I can't complain. How are you doing? I am good. Okay. Now, you are an author. And basically, your book came out in April of, April 4, 2020? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, tell us a little about your book. Because I, I done read some amazing things that you got <laughs> going on. And, you know, and it's amazing that little time that you have accomplished so much. Yeah, so essentially it's a, um, my book is, it, it's a drama, it's a mystery, um, it's a thriller, uh, it's nonfiction, um, and it's basically uh, an, exp- an opportunity for someone to embark on a journey behind one of Beijing's and one of China's penitentiaries. Mm. Yeah, so it's pretty much the little bit of a spoiler idea. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get too much because I I want people to go out there and read it for themselves. Yeah. But definitely, it is worth the read. <laughs> Without a doubt. Okay. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. So I want you to tell me what inspired you to write the book. Mm, so my cousin, well. A friend that I've, you know what I'm saying, I've known since middle school. He's an author. He was an author before we graduated high school. Mm-hmm. So um, he was the one that encouraged me to write my story. Because I knew I was going to do something with my story. I didn't know necessarily what I was going to do with it. But he was like, hey, man, you need to write a book. You know what I'm saying? You should write a book about it. I'm like, okay, sounds like a good idea. You know what I mean? So he took my phone and went into my notes, and my notes section of my phone. And he pretty much just wrote out an outline for the yeah. book. You know what I'm saying? Just a, a brief outline. It was like five pieces to it. And I just went in and filled in under each category that he set. And here we are, what, eight, nine months later. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So tell them right now, tell them the name of your book. 14 Days in Beijing. 14 Days in Beijing. And it's based on a true story? True story. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so tell me a testimony because with my interviews, I have people to do a testimony of mm-hmm. what you went through and how you got past. But I know when the outline of what I read about your book and stuff, that's a testimony by itself right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I just feel like because for the longest I've identified as an athlete. I played football from high, you know what I'm saying, high school through college. So for the longest, that's the only thing I've been able to identify as. So okay. once that ended, trying to find who am I all over again was a process. Uh-huh. It was a journey for real. It was really a journey because, like, like I said, for so long, like, so long part of my lifetime, uh, I'm chance to football player. Okay, football has ended. Okay. Okay, Chance, who are you? You know what I mean? So it's like, and of course, we've heard, you know what I'm saying, anybody that plays sports growing up, you know what I'm saying, you heard, oh, what's your backup plan, da 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 mm-hmm. But it's, you know what I'm saying, still it's just not something that'll really stick with you until it actually happens. You know what I'm saying? So how was your childhood? The um, Your mom and dad, was they there? Well, um, my mother pretty much raised me and my younger brother. Okay. You know, so by, by herself for the most part. Um, I have a great relationship with my father. There's no bad blood there. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to you, pops. Um, but 
yeah, my mother, that's the that's the foundation right there. She pretty much raised me and my brother by herself. And we both finished school, um, both doing pretty well. We're still trying to, like, he played football. My younger brother played football as well. So, you know what I'm saying? Trying to find who we are outside of, you know what I'm saying, this sport is it's been a journey, but I'm slowly finding my purpose. Okay. Well, forward. you don't find your purpose. <laughs> you know, because what I was reading was, you know, the um, the award, Amazon Top 100 Best Seller yeah. list, you know, and number one in American and Asian dramas. Yeah. And yeah. plays and teens and young adult ebooks. So I take it that you pretty much done found what you supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was it was honestly a surprise. Like I knew the story. I know the story is is, is a great one, and I know mm-hmm. with the right individuals, like with the light, the, the perfect light shined on this story, mm-hmm. it'll sell itself. The the title sells itself. The cover will sell itself. Then once you yeah. read and embark on the journey for yourself, it's sold. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I just I already knew what it was, what I had in my possession. I just needed to get it to the right light so it can be seen by everybody. Yeah. yeah. And 14 days in 14 days in Beijing. Okay, so mm-hmm. how did you end up in Beijing? That's what mm-hmm. I want to know. Well, for um once I, I my college football career ended in November 2017. Mm-hmm. So from that point on, I was I started applying for jobs. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to go the corporate route. You know what I'm saying? Because I went to I went to a very prestigious university. Stetson University is a very prestigious school, uh, private institution in Florida. Nickname is Harvard of the South. So you know what I'm saying? It's a very profound institution. Yeah, I can I'm tell like, about your words and stuff and your <laughs> writing. You know, I'm like, okay, we're yeah, very intelligent. You know what I <laughs> mean? So like, I was trying to do the corporate lifestyle. And so I was from November. All the all the way until like July, June, July. I was applying for jobs, landing interviews, being flown out to different places. But when it came to like landing an actual position, it was quiet for me. So mm-hmm. I did that. So I was just applying and interviewing for eight months straight, and wasn't. I just kept coming up short, kept coming up short. But I'm resilient. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. uh, when things, you know, what I'm saying playing sports, when things don't go your way. You know, things aren't going to go your way when it comes to sports. So it's like that was just preparation for that period of time that I was in. Okay, I'm trying to make some shape for the the, the next step for me, but it ain't working out. Ideally, okay, well let me reevaluate what I'm doing. Say, so, okay, I'm applying strictly to corporate positions. I say, okay, corporate may not be for me. You've been doing this for six, seven, eight months, and it still ain't landing nothing. Okay, time to try something else. Um, so one day I was, uh, job searching and usually when I, when I job search, I don't put nothing in the title. As far as the position now, I just search, I just hit search, you know what I'm saying? Whatever comes up, I feel like I can do, then I'll apply for it. So one day, um, when I was on the, the, the job search, I think it was on LinkedIn and it was a section, a button that was like international. So like I could search for jobs internationally. Something in my spirit told me to click on it, so I clicked on it. So I'm just browsing just the different jobs they had overseas. I came across one that said, teach English in China. I said, okay, that sound, that sound hard. You know what I'm saying? So I just looked at it, was, okay, what's the requirements? All right. Native English speaker, all right, boom. Clean background, boom. Degree, I'm like, oh man, that's easy right there. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So how do I apply? Just submit a resume? That takes nothing but a second, literally. So I just applied to it and kept going, you know what I'm saying, on through my search. A few days passed, they hit me up, we set up an interview. Um, I passed the interview and they wanted to move forward me as a candidate. So that's how I ended up in China. <laughs> okay, so how did you end up locked up in China? You gotta read the book. <laughs> you gotta read the book. You gotta read the book. <laughs> you Just know I was living my best life. Pieces. You don't don't give too much, but give us little pieces so you know people. It 
be excited about what they get ready to read because even though you telling me this, I still want the book. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. So essentially, um, for all the future fans out there, if you are familiar with this 56 Nights project and if you know the background of that story behind, you know what I'm saying, what inspired that project, then I, you know what I'm saying, you, you already know, you already know what I'm already getting at. But for everybody else that isn't familiar, um, pretty much it has something to do with um, marijuana, honestly, at the end of the day. <laughs> marijuana, okay. But. Okay. Okay. So this right here, you know, when you say I felt at home simultaneously, what mm -hmm. was you talking about then? Like, how did you feel at home? Talking about in China or when you was locked up? Um, in my native land. So here in America, like, even though I'm Native American, you know what I'm saying? Most people wouldn't even be able to tell that just because, you know what I'm saying, my skin tone, but I'm Native American. Both parents, grandparents, both grandparents on both sides of my parents are Native American, you know what I'm saying? My mother's side is Cherokee. My father's side is Wetumpka and Choctaw. So with that being said, it's like, okay, we all know that this land in specific Native Americans have been here from the very beginning of time. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this is, it don't get no more authentic than this. You know what I'm saying? Here in America, this is where, this is my bread and butter. This is where my people always have been and always have thrived. It was, we had our own way of life before settlement and colonization. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. in my own land, yeah, I feel at home, but yeah, I still feel foreign at the same time. Because being a person of color, you, you going to, face a lot of different obstacles, a lot of different obstacles. There's a lot of things set up. Yes, yeah, a lot of things set up far as systematically wise to assure how you feel the way that you feel, you see things the way that you see, and you move the way that you move. Mm -hmm. and luckily, you know what I'm saying, I've just been blessed to, to be able to become conscious of the world that I live in and what has taken place. and all uh, the, the 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 finesse and, and cap that's been placed on my people i've been able to, to see through all of it and yeah that's essentially why i am and you know what i'm saying i am the way that i am and i see things the way that i see things and i move the way that i move okay okay so do you see yourself actually going to schools and stuff speaking without a doubt Without a doubt, because with this story, even though, you know what I'm saying, it, it, you know what I'm saying, how I ended up in this situation is due to drugs, quote unquote drugs, you know what I'm saying, it is still a lesson, many, many lessons to be learned from the story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, it isn't like that, okay, I'm sitting here promoting, you know what I'm saying, drug, I'm promoting smoking, I'm promoting this, that, and the other. No, nah, this is just something that I was engaging in, and... I had to face the consequences for doing so. So I feel like if any, anybody and everybody can can learn something from this story. They learn something. Do you feel that um, in China, the laws are rougher than it is? Woo China, you can't even access Facebook, Instagram, all the regular sites that we, you can't even access that in China. You have to have a VPN to access all that. They have their own everything. So if it isn't China based or is it ain't made from China, then they blocking it out whatsoever. Wow. Yeah, okay. it's like that. <laughs> it's like that. But overall, I live my best life in China. Like you read the story, you're like, dang, but China sound da 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 China da da da. Man, it's just the last 14 days you're reading about. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? You read the when you read the book, you see that I entered the country in uh, October 10th, 2018. So it was like, okay, for that time up until this point, these last 14 days, what was life like for you? Oh, man, I lived my best life out there. Okay. I loved every minute of it. Enjoyed it. Food was great. People were great. Um, especially the people that I met out there that are, you know what I'm saying, that are from other different walks of life. Like, 
China was a hell of an experience. So do you think if you had never got locked up that you would have stayed there? Well, originally, I, my plan was to just do my year contract. And then after that, I was going to see what, you know what I'm saying, what was else out there for me. I didn't plan on staying out there no longer. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't. But ain't no telling. If I would have did a whole year, ain't no telling what, you know what I'm saying, how my viewpoint on it would be or, you know what I'm saying, how I would see it or how I go about making the, the next decision on if I'm going to stay or if I'm going to leave. I, have, I actually have no clue. But I feel like that six months was <clears throat> was good enough. I got a, a full experience, <laughs> a full experience of China within that six months. So I'm like, okay. I just took it as a sign from the universe and my ancestors said, okay, this is something that I wanted to do. They already knew, you know what I'm saying, everything that came that was going to come with it and just the lifestyle that I was living, they already knew, all right, you're going to be good for this amount of time. And yeah. then after that, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be time for you to go. And not just speaking from just how I was living, but just from the, the past events that have taken place to, you know what I'm saying, the past couple months. Yeah. So it's like you're looking at it from that aspect, okay, I see what y'all was doing on that aspect too. You know what I'm saying? Cause I still got folks that's still over there in China right now. You know what I'm saying? And they just thugging it. You know what I'm saying? They just holding it down. Okay. Well, I see that you took up communication and media. So tell me mm -hmm. about your media. Have you done anything in that? <laughs> well, yeah, I actually I have. Um, my freshman year of college, I was uh, working with our broadcast production team mm -hmm. and working with filming our game, our basketball games. But I also, I was in front of the camera, mainly. That's what I was striving in, interviewing people. Um, that type of role. That's the role I was really doing. I was, I interviewed it. Uh, I interviewed um, Victor Oladipo from the, uh, he, at that time he was playing for the Orlando Magics. So now he plays for a whole completely different team. But I got to interview him, interview, like, I, president of the school like just I had got a sense yeah I just got that experience of just like just being an interviewee and you know, interviewing different people and yeah how to come up with questions spontaneously and you know what I'm saying in the because I can actually um, see you doing some stuff that, that, <laughs> that you know talking to the kids and stuff. Uh, I, yeah. I, I got that gift of like just listening to a person that first conversation I'd be like hey hey you thought about doing this <laughs> <laughs> Nah, definitely. That, that, I mean, ironically, just choosing that major was, uh, I had no intentions on majoring in communications. When I first entered college, I was strictly just trying to play football. That's, you know what I'm saying? That lets you know what type of, strictly solely football. They asked me, like, oh, what you trying to major in? I had no clue what them folks was talking about. It was like, what you trying to major in? What you trying to study? I'm just looking at them like they're crazy. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. What you talking about majoring in? What is that? I'm, you laughing. I'm, I'm for real. I'm like, what, do you, what is a major? I'm so, like, I was so just, like, solely just football, 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 football. I forgot the whole aspect of going to college to study something. Mm -hmm. My main obligation was just trying to play football. So the lady was like, what you trying to major in? I'm just looking at, see, they had a long list of all the majors they offered at the school. So I'm just looking up there. I'm like, Hmm, communication, it stuck out to me. I was like, I remember uh, hearing some classmates when I was in high school talk about communication. I was like, oh yeah, you can be on TV and you know what I'm saying, news reporter, whoop, 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 doing that. I was like, okay, that sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Out of everything else that I'm looking at, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. And it just turned out to be the perfect, the best thing for me, honestly. <laughs> it turned out, the universe has been working with me for a very long time. My ancestors have been with me for a very long time, so. Well, it's definitely true what they say that everything that happens in your life is setting you up a step close to who you're supposed to be in the future. Precisely, precisely. So right now, you basically living your dreams through communication, even though it's through writing. It's still communication. Now so what? The next step, if you get your <laughs> book, taking it to places, and yeah. actually communication through voice. No, well, without a doubt. And writing, ironically, writing isn't even one of my strongest suits. Like, that is, 
probably the one of the, the fields that I struggle the most in, writing. Yeah, I can't tell with uh, <laughs> top 100 bestsellers, you know. And, so that speaks volume, that speaks volume that precisely. Speaks a lot. That speaks it, volume. I mean, I'm intimidated when it comes to writing, but you know what I'm saying? I just had to step outside of my comfort zone and to see the results from doing that and mm -hmm. it's, like, it's mind blowing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the thing is, I'm, I'm gonna make a suggestion and you can think about this later, but since you love football so much, I always try to encourage my fans and stuff to actually find something that you had a passion for when you was a child and find a way to make it work for you when you're grown. So that way you're still doing your passion and you're also mm -hmm. making money from it. Well, so what about going to get in touch with schools and stuff and finding out about the football teams where you can actually go talk to them? You know, you'll <laughs> still be around the sports, what you love, mentoring, the young boys that has the same passion that you really have deep down inside of you. <laughs> well, I didn't even think about it from that aspect, like visiting just like different teams and stuff and just speaking. I didn't even think about it from that aspect. But yeah. ironically, I do coach football. <laughs> I do coach. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do. I'm, a, I'm a jack of all trades. A of, I do a bunch of different, I do any and everything. So I'm, I'm I'm coaching for high school here in Cobb County in Georgia where I live. Um, we did pretty we did decent last year. You know what I'm saying? We made the playoffs, and that was my first playoff experience because in high school my team was sorry we didn't make the playoffs, and in college we didn't make the playoffs either. So it was a, my first playoff experience. So that was a vibe within itself. And I, you know what I'm saying, for the longest people always told me, man, I can see you coaching, I can see you being a coach, da 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 I was like, uh, I'm saying, I guess so. <laughs> I'm like, I guess so, yeah. But it took me actually stepping out there and being back into those same vibrations and, you know what I'm saying, identifying with the, the players. And it's like, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I see what everybody was talking about, so I do. Yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm looking forward to this, to this next season, honestly, especially with this virus and stuff going on because everybody is pretty much in the same boat as far as preparation for the next and upcoming season. So I just feel like it's going to make the season, if, it, if there is a season, it's going to make it that much more interesting just to see, okay, everybody has had a limited time to prepare. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like to see who can excel just – Based off that, this this small uh, window of time we've had, it's just gonna speak values on just the coaching, the culture, the program. You know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So, and I feel like we have a great staff, we have a great culture that we're establishing, we're building, and I'm excited for the future. For us. So, what have you been doing through this virus, this thing that's going on? <laughs> have you been staying in? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Um, but I take, um, this herb called sea moss. Mm -hmm. So sea moss has, hey, sea moss has 92 of the 102 minerals that the human body needs. And in addition with that, I'm taking bladder rack and burdock root. So, you know what I'm saying? Bladder rack and burdock root, they treat so many different ailments, illnesses, diseases, um, you name it. And along with sea moss as well. So it's like all three of these concoctions, I ain't even worried about no virus, no, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't, I can't, I ain't worried about it, honestly, real. Not to say it isn't real, or, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, you know what I'm saying, affecting folks, but as far as my everyday life, no, nah, we boot you up here. And I fast for the most part as well. I see, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Most people are not even conscious, okay? A lot of the disease comes from the food that you eat, you know what I'm saying? The mucus that's in your system, a lot of the mucus in your system holds a lot of bacteria and a lot of diseases and illness as well. So in order to alleviate disease, you got to eliminate the mucus. Mm -hmm. How do you eliminate the mucus? Okay, what are you eating? These are the type of questions nobody asks. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, precisely. I eat, I eat really bad. I you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's like you, folks not even doing what they're supposed to, you know what I'm saying? What they ought to be doing when it comes just from what you can't control. So it's yeah. like you worried about something that's beyond your control. Mm -hmm. 
know what I'm saying? Now you've just driven by what the media is telling you, and you know what I'm saying? They invoking your emotions through uh, ethos, and you know what I'm saying? It's just all. <laughs> You know, like I, said, I studied the media, so I already know what the, the news outlets and I don't know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be forgetting, okay, this is a business at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. All these all these uh news shows and you know what I'm saying, all these different platforms, they get paid for ratings. Yeah. They get paid for the amount of people that view they sites, whatever they, you know what I'm saying, they putting out to the media. So and a lot of it don't even matter if it's the truth. 100% of the truth, half of the truth, a quarter of the truth. Hey, we got it first, we got to put it out. Yeah. We got to put it out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't really feed into the media a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm just taking my CMOS, I'm fasting, and I, I exercise regularly. I get some CMOS, and uh, yeah. Got to. Got to. Got to. It's the healing component. And water, too. Water is. And it's also depending on the right, you know what I'm saying, the specific water that you're drinking. You drink alkaline spring water, natural spring water, that's the best water for you. Water is the most important natural component we have today. It makes up our world, our bodies, it has the ability to destroy and create. It is the healing component. Shout out to that boy, Mick Jenkins. You know I mean? Okay. Okay. Well, Tell them your website and stuff, your website information, so they can have your information. Um. So, um, 14 days in Beijing.com. You can find, you know what I'm saying? That's my website. Uh, you search any social media platform Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, 14 days in Beijing. You'll be able to find me. Amazon, Barney's and Noble, iBooks, um, Kindle. 14 days in Beijing. Oh. You'll be able to find me on, you know what I'm saying, on my book, or just more of, you know what I'm saying, just my content, just searching those those tags on any of the platforms you have. And be sure to get your copy of 14 Days of Beijing available on Amazon, iBooks, and Barnes and Noble. <laughs> For sure. Awesome, awesome. Okay, get them your Instagram information and uh, whatever other site that you have that you. And look up to find you. For sure. As far as social media, you can look me up under Corley J. So that's K O R L E H J. Or just search 14 Days of Beijing. I wouldn't change all my social media accounts to this book. So you search this book on any of your social media accounts, you're guaranteed to find me. For sure. Okay. <laughs> awesome. No well, with they close, I want you to give them some type of knowledge that you feel as though can somebody can grow with right now give them a closing mm. i say find your purpose or you wasting air and quote to nipsey hustle um if you didn't work or go to school what would you do and quote to DeMarco Reddins and also in quote to DeMarco Reddins are you living a dream or are you fulfilling your purpose oh. take those take that time to really sit back and reflect on those questions reevaluate everything and man create 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 that's all I can say get something with your name on it probably with your name on it Okay. You probably need to move your phone back over because when you move to your uh, video, start freezing. Well, everyone, I am getting ready to close. And this is Rosita Cooper, aka Miss Sip with Sip on Radio and Living Your Dreams <laughs> Reality Show. And he is on Living Your Dreams with Rosita. And like he said, <laughs> life with a purpose. And you know how I end it. Peace and love, peace and blessings. Peace.